Man, what's up, what's up, what's up, it's your boy, Jim Odamuto. We back with another video today, watching Cartoons Dojo. Boy, I haven't seen this video in a minute, but he posted something new today. Uh, the most overrated form in Dragon Ball. I remember him kind of hitting at this. I watched him uh, collab with TSO Sage. I watched those videos on my own and shit. Uh, but, yeah. So, he was, hitting, he was hitting at this for a minute, so I was like, okay, bet, bet, baby. I watched the Super Saiyan 3 video when it drops because I know it's going to be a big video so uh obviously let's get into it oh I ain't, I ain't fucking the most overrated form in Dragon Ball <laughs> so and make sure y'all like comment subscribe and let's go Super Saiyan 3 is a bad transformation don't leave an angry comment or a death threat yet just hear me out hear the first out. thing that I have to make clear is if you think Super Saiyan 3 um, before, before you get into it is Super Saiyan 3 the most overrated form as you that in the comments, predicts, predicts. Well, wait, it's not in the prediction video. <laughs> anyway, is it a bad form? Uh, it's a useless form. May say that it's a useless form. I ain't gonna say it's bad form. It's just useless because it's he don't use it. Uh, only time he used it was in the movie. It was in movies, and he got one dub with it in the movie, and that's it. And arguably, I don't know why he ain't had to usually he ain't really had to use the Super Saiyan three form in the movie. Nigga, Ultimate Gohan was there. Ultimate Gohan could have did the same shit, but better. I don't. You know what? We ain't gonna tape you on that little tape weak ass tape you on movie. People love it. It's alright. Looks cool. I agree. In the anime, at least. The manga was hit and miss for me. Speaking of the manga, I want to be clear, oh, my focus really is on that, Dragon that, Ball's manga, and by extension, the manga accurate portions of Dragon Ball Z. So the non-canon Dragon Ball Z movies, those are fine with me. If anything, Super Saiyan 3 is cooler in the two Dragon Ball Z movies yeah, it's in than any it other time in the series. So if those are your reasons for liking Super Saiyan 3, great, I love that for you. But in terms of the story of Dragon Ball, it's a really big miss for me. And I think I can explain why in three points. And more importantly, I want to end this with how I think Super Saiyan 3 could have been better used. I don't want this to be all negative. Let's start with character assassination. I think we all know by the time of the Buu Saga, Toriyama was getting tired of Dragon Ball and seemed to start having a more cynical outlook on Goku as a character. This is especially clear as the arc progresses. Goku starts the arc as someone who's willing to sacrifice his one day on Earth in order to protect the planet from an unknown threat. He's constantly trying to make sure that Boo isn't revived, and despite being lighthearted about Bobbidi's weaker minions, he continues this seriousness through the Majin Vegeta encounter, and even his limited time on the lookout after he wakes up from Vegeta's sucker punch. There, he's even surprisingly strict when he's training Goten and Trunks to fuse. He's not playing around, and the story is doing everything to tell us that he isn't. Then, this is all immediately undermined by Goku revealing he has Super Saiyan 3, since the form could have stopped Boo from being revived in the first place. Some people seem to think that Goku using Super Saiyan 3 would have given more energy to Boo's revival, but that's just wrong. Boo doesn't just collect power from the air or whatever those people think. He okay. specifically gets energy from fighters that aren't Bobbidi's minions being damaged. This is why Pui Pui and Yakon getting killed didn't help to revive Boo. The energy only comes from the damage they deal, not the damage they take. Uh... That's why Goku says he wants to end the fight with Majin Vegeta quickly at full power. He's taking the threat of Boo seriously. Oh, did you catch that? Yeah, read it again real quick. Goku's supposedly fighting at full power here. Super Saiyan 3 makes Goku a massive liar in retrospect, right. and not just one little lie to Vegeta either. He lies to Piccolo about being unable to beat Boo at all, to then simply being unsure if he can beat Boo as a Super Saiyan 3, which is a bit better, though it doesn't solve the Vegeta issue. Goku explains that he didn't use Super Saiyan 3 against Majin Vegeta because of the time limit, but if he was able to bounce Boo around like a paddle ball long enough for Trunks to get the Dragon Radar, I think he had more than enough time to knock out Majin Vegeta. Then later, Goku flat out brags he could have beat in Boo when he first fought him, but chose not to. Not even pretending there was doubt anymore like he did to Piccolo earlier on. It's insane when you compare this arrogant Goku, who's about to not yeah, beat Kid Boo, by the way, after the three Earth times. was destroyed and all of the people he loves were killed, to Goku at the beginning of the arc, who's more concerned about the potential of this threat than his one precious day on Earth. I think you could see Toriyama's cynical view of Goku evolving over the course of this story, and ultimately it hurts Goku as a character, 
and it's all rooted in Super Saiyan 3 existing as a form for Goku. Like, yeah. imagine Goku was strong enough to beat Cell in the Cell games and just chose not to. That would suck, and people would cry right. about it even more than they already do with the Senzu Bean. The reason Goku fights Cell first is to see if he can beat Cell without having to rely on Gohan. If he could have won, he would have won. Right. And he says as much to Gohan. It's powerful when Goku gives up. It affirms to us that Gohan is the sole chance for Earth to survive because we already saw how everyone couldn't begin to compare themselves to how strong Goku was. It's not just Goku making a risky choice to gamble on the next generation that seems completely out of character when compared to his actions in the beginning of the arc. Speaking of the Cell Saga, let's go to point number two, regression. I want you to think back to when Trunks fights Perfect Cell. He uses Super Saiyan Grade 3. Right. Sacrificing mobility and speed for power to the point that in the manga, Trunks never lands a single hit on Cell while he's in this form. It's explicitly to show Trunks' inexperience and naivety, especially since the fight is interlaced with scenes showing what's Such happening in the time chamber. Here. Goku learns Super Saiyan Grade 2 and Grade 3 extremely quickly, but as fast as he learns them, he sees their obvious weaknesses that limit their overall effectiveness. This is not just about the speed loss from Super Saiyan Grade 3 either. Grade 2 also suffers from consuming too much energy. These forms are just inefficient, gaining power in exchange for a very obvious downside. Mm. This is why Super Saiyan 2 is actually really interesting. It's a more powerful Super Saiyan form that seemingly doesn't have these issues. It is truly the form to surpass the Super Saiyan wall, an efficient and powerful evolution of Super Saiyan. So why the f is Super Saiyan 3 like this? The Super Saiyan grades exist as a warning. Their purpose is to show that there are wrong ways to go about getting mm, stronger. That's the okay. reason I actually like both of them, even if they're supposedly useless. They further the narrative. They lead to something better. Meanwhile, Super Saiyan 3 is the final Super Saiyan form of the original manga, and it just reintroduces some of these obvious flaws without having a greater purpose. I've said this before, so I won't harp on it too much, but you could just not have Super Saiyan 3 in the Buu Saga, and things don't actually change that much. True. I'm not saying that characters like Boo stay as strong as they are, as this would obviously require a rewrite and not a simple what if, but would it be so bad if Goku stalled Boo in a more creative way? Would Gotenks be less cool if he was just a Super Saiyan 2 instead? Actually, we'll get back to Gotenks in a bit. Yeah, you the form just you feels so forced, especially considering how it gets no it foreshadowing, is. and with Goku random. lying, it actually gets anti-foreshadowing. Super Saiyan is foreshadowed by the legend that's repeated over the course of an entire arc. Super Saiyan 2 is foreshadowed by both Gohan's hidden potential and the hunt for a form that would surpass the Super Saiyan wall. Super Saiyan 3 gets none of that. It just shows up only to get almost immediately overshadowed, which is actually my next point. While Super Saiyan 3 has a cool introduction, it doesn't really do much. And when- Yeah, it doesn't do much. Now that I think about it, I admit we played the video games and shit. When I played with Goku, I hardly ever uh, turned to Super Saiyan 3. It was either Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 1. And we skipping that bitch. We going to the Super Saiyan 4. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the Xenoverse, we, nigga, we going to Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Blue. Nigga, Super Saiyan 3 is very, very, like... You know, when you first see it, it's cool as hell. Then after that, kind of like, eh. Eh. Now, cause now you see it's like kind of just useless, you know what I'm saying? It's just useless. You know, maybe they can revamp it with the uh, Universe 6 saying, you get in Super Saiyan 3 and they learn how to master it. Maybe they can do flip it, do something like that with it. But that, besides that, I don't think. When I say it doesn't do much, I'm not just talking about winning fights either. It just isn't that present in most of the series, and it's honestly replaced by other new things pretty quickly. The first is fusion. Like I said, Super Saiyan 2 Gotenks would have been fine, and Vegito doesn't even use anything besides regular Super Saiyan, but he's such a beast and a fan favorite anyway. Honestly, I just think more people like Vegito than Super Saiyan 3 but maybe I'm out of touch. You can let me know in the comments. But let's not forget the other new form of the arc, Ultimate. Now I'm sure the Dragon Ball movies make you think of Super Saiyan 3 as the better form, nah. but narratively, even if it's a bit redundant, Gohan having untapped hidden power and getting an efficient transformation to access that power with is way better than the problems Super Saiyan 3 causes for Goku's character in this arc. And more importantly, Gohan continues to use his ultimate form while Super Saiyan 3 makes seemingly no progress. In Super, we're instantly shown that Super Saiyan 3 is far behind the powers that Goku will face in this story with a 
flick heard around the world. It was on King Kai's planet though, so I guess it wasn't that hard to hear. The God Forms obviously go on to replace Super Saiyan yeah. 3 as well, but even worse, in the anime's version of the Tournament of Power, it's heavily implied that Super Saiyan 3 is far less efficient than even Super Saiyan God in Goku's fight with Kale and Khalifla. Honestly, Khalifla, if you're watching this, give up on Super Saiyan 3 there are better forms there available. Are. Hell, Goku doesn't even use it when using all of his transformations against Jiren in the anime. That is true. This isn't even just a canon thing either. In GT, we see Super Saiyan 3 twice, once without a tail and once with. The idea was Goku having a tail would make him strong enough to beat Baby, but nope, he gets Super Saiyan 4 instead because Super Saiyan 3 can't do shit. It's so funny to think Super Saiyan 3 had one chance to get a pretty notable W, beating Boo in Goku's first fight with him, but instead, he chooses to let the kids handle it, and even with them using Super Saiyan 3, they don't Useless. manage to do it either. Something I think of as Goku's greatest failure, but even ignoring Goten and Trunks being failures, I think they're the best way to use Super Saiyan 3. Like I've been explaining, most of the reasons to dislike Super Saiyan 3 narratively are Goku-centric but Goten and Trunks don't have that same baggage. Instead of them copying Super Saiyan 3, why not have them discover it? It may sound dumb, but having the inexperienced kids discover a form that increases mm. their power at the cost of efficiency makes way more sense. Gotenks is already a gag-heavy character, so this could be a classic Toriyama gag scene too, and the setup is already baked into the manga. We see that after a week of training in the time chamber, Goten and Trunks are exhausted as they talk about achieving a level beyond Super Saiyan. Cut the part of them explaining the stamina and fusion time limit issues for now. Then imagine we didn't know about Super Saiyan 3 yet. You'd think they meant Super Saiyan 2. Eventually, they would get betrayed and trapped in the time chamber, only to then reveal their new form, Super Saiyan 3, and its power blows Piccolo away. He really thinks they can beat Boo now. Meanwhile, Goku is watching them from the realm of the Kaioshin with Elder Kai's crystal ball. While Supreme Kai and Kabito are in awe of Gotenks' power, Goku is a bit skeptical. The fight with Super Boo plays out the same, still ending with Goten Tanks losing the form and deep okay, using early okay, okay, explaining okay, like, okay, like they do. knew about this weakness like and decided to, to use it anyway. There's no regression, no character assassination, and not nearly as much of an issue with overshadowing since the form is supposed to be bad. It also leaves Gotenks an exclusive form to build off of in the future that would be mm. entirely his own. In the same way, we have exclusive forms for most characters now. So if the Boo Saga really needed Super Saiyan 3, I think it should have been a Gotenks exclusive form. But it wasn't, so it sucks. Okay. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. Okay, okay, okay. I like this version. I like the version because it's just, um, yeah, just to accidentally just discover Super Saiyan 3, and, you know, it was kind of foreshadowed when to go, okay, that, I like that. I like that instead of just being random like Goku. That was, it was random. Um, but yeah, Super Saiyan 3, cool scene, you know, um, cool scene, had some good moments and great moments in the movies. That's it, man. Super Saiyan 3 is useless. And it's cool. Because we got way better forms now. <laughs> way more efficient forms. You know. And, 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 and at the end of the day, that's that's it. You know. And I, I'm pretty sure there are some Super Saiyan 3 defendants that want to just... Well, Super Saiyan 3 is just, you know, that, that, that. Like, it's, make, it's mid. It's mid. It's a mid. Mid-ass form. Might be the worst Super Saiyan form. I'm trying to think. Or the worst transformation, low key. Or one of them. Damn. Super Saiyan 3 is probably the worst transformation in Dragon Ball. Damn. That sucks. Anyway, <laughs> uh, shout out to Cartoon Dozer for this video. And uh, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. And I'll catch y'all next time. Make sure y'all check out the last Cartoon Dozer video right here. And one right here. So I'll catch you next time. Peace.